Hello everybody and welcome to another week here on the Fry Smiles Oral Health Network. I'm your host Scott Fry. And if you tuned into last week's episode, you may notice I have the exact same outfit on. That's because I'm all set to go on my honeymoon to I think it's it's Playa del Carmen. It's uh, south of Cancun. And there's no way that I'm going to be wasting any time on my honeymoon going ahead and videotaping episodes and doing research. Because I want to enjoy myself and pay attention to my wife. And, you know, I love all you guys out here. I love doing these posts. But, frankly, I am going to be enjoying my honeymoon. So, there we have it. Today's kind of a fun facts episode. I don't know how applicable this is uh, for when you're selecting your coffee. Because this is not super you know, available information on the packages. But basically, when, before the coffee ever gets to your cup, the, the fruit's harvested and they have to go ahead and remove uh, the four different layers that's surrounding the bean. And that process of removing those layers is called post-harvest processing. Now, some internet coffee providers would be able to provide you this information about how the coffee's processed. So, if that's how you're buying your coffee out there, you know, this information is going to be really super useful to you. But for a lot of people who are just getting things at the supermarket or buying them at your local coffee distributor, that information may not be uh, readily available. But you can kind of make some assumptions based on the country, uh, similar to how we kind of made uh, our guesses about which were Arabica and which were Robusta beans without actually opening up and looking at the physical beans themselves. So pretty much it comes down to a simple formula here. Um, the more water that's involved in the processing method, the greater the concentration of coffee stains that are going to be in the actual bean when it gets to you. And the reason that that occurs is because a lot of the more water-soluble components are removed with that water, and it basically concentrates the rest of the things left over. Um, so, you know, there's three actual, three standard types. There's the dry processing, there's the semi-wet processing, and then there's the wet processing. And the wet processing, you know, that's a relatively new method, I guess, from what I've read. And it's mostly used in Central America. So, <clears throat> if you're looking at coffees uh, that you're buying from places like Ecuador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, they're probably using a wet processing method uh, to go ahead and get the bean out of the fruit. Uh, the semi-dry method is going to be used by you know more small-scale farmers. Um, you know some Sumatran coffee is done by the uh, semi-dry method. And if anybody out there has a lot more knowledge on some of these methods and where they're used, give me a comment because this was really pain in the butt to go ahead and dig this information up. And it's accurate. But, you know, I would like some more information myself because when I'm buying coffee, this is some good, good stuff to know about. Uh, and the dry processing coffee, last but not least, you know, that's going to be used in countries with little rainfall because it's a difficult method to do when the environment's moist. Uh, places like Indonesia, Ethiopia, Yemen, um, I've seen that, uh, that they use that a whole lot there. Also, ironically, Brazil tends to dry process their, process their coffee a whole lot, like I think 95% and, and, uh, and up probably of the, the beans that come out of Brazil are all dry processed. Uh, and almost all of your Robusta beans that you're going to find in the store are dry processed coffees. I think that's probably because they already have such a high polyphenol content and further concentrating those would probably give it a more astringent taste. But that's just my best guess on what I know. Um, so pretty much when you're looking at you know, how coffee's processed and you're concerned about two stains, you just need to know that the wetter the process, the more stains you're going to get. It's pretty simple. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Lots of just fun information out there for you, and the more you know, the better. All right? Well, take care. I will see you soon. Uh, I hope I'm going to try and keep up with some of the comments. Maybe I'll go over to the business center at the hotel and drop in to see if anyone's uh, you know, discussing some of the posts. But take care, everyone, and I'll see you in a little bit.